Aortic stenosis is a narrowing of the aortic valve of the heart, causing an obstruction to blood flow between the left ventricle and the aorta. There are four valves in the heart, the mitral valve and tricuspid valves, which lie between the atrium and ventricle on the left and right side respectively, and the aortic and pulmonary valves, the pulmonary lying between the right ventricle and pulmonary artery, and the aortic valve between the left ventricle and aorta. Generally, defects affecting these valves are divided into stenosis, meaning narrowing, or insufficient, meaning there is leakage through the valve. As we said, aortic stenosis is a narrowing of the aortic valve. The obstruction to blood flow between the left ventricle and aorta increases the afterload, which is the resistance against which the left ventricle must contract to pump blood around the body. This results in increased ventricular pressure, and to compensate, the left ventricle becomes hypertrophied concentrically, which is a problem because the ventricle becomes less compliant and therefore does not stretch as well, and so the pressure at the end of diastole is higher, eventually causing diastolic heart failure, which often features dyspnea, meaning shortness of breath, especially during periods of increased demand, such as exercise. Also bear in mind, a thicker left ventricle needs a higher blood supply, while the coronary blood supply is actually reduced in aortic stenosis. This can manifest as angina. Left untreated, over time the adaptive mechanism will fail, and wall stress increases, ultimately causing reduced systolic function and systolic heart failure. You'll find free practice material on aortic stenosis, including multiple choice questions, case scenarios, and flashcards, available through Wisdolia. As you answer, you'll get feedback on what you got wrong and why. Find the link below. It is the most common valvular disease in the Western world, thought to affect around 12% of people at the age of 75. The most common cause of aortic stenosis in the West is aortic sclerosis, meaning calcification, which occurs as a result of inflammation and lipid deposition in the valve, and over time eventually becomes stenosis, which is why calcific aortic valve disease is considered a spectrum. This process is similar to that of atherosclerosis and features several of the same risk factors, including hypertension, smoking, elevated low-density lipoprotein cholesterol and lipoprotein little a, and elevated C-reactive protein. Around 1 in 4 people over 65 are thought to have aortic sclerosis, and 80% of aortic stenosis cases are linked to calcification. Normally, the aortic valve is a tricuspid valve, featuring three leaflets, but a congenital bicuspid valve makes up the majority of the remainder of cases and is the most common cause under 70 years of age. In developing countries, rheumatic fever is the most common cause across all age groups. It may be asymptomatic for many years. However, as it progresses, symptoms develop and the classic features include syncope or lightheadedness, angina and dyspnea, especially as we mentioned on exertion. Together, these are sometimes called the SAD triad. These mostly occur because the cardiac output is reduced and cannot increase enough to overcome the obstruction and meet the perfusion demands. Bear in mind that they are not always exertional though, as aortic stenosis can predispose to arrhythmias like ventricular tachycardia and therefore non-exertional symptoms too and can cause sudden cardiac death. Features such as peripheral pitting edema, orthopnea, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, and a raised jugular venous pressure are also possible findings, often indicating development of heart failure. Interestingly, these patients can be prone to gastrointestinal bleeding, as the high shear stress across the aortic valve can activate and use up von Willebrand factor, leading to a relative deficiency of it causing an acquired coagulopathy. This can lead to bleeding in patients with angiodysplasia of the gastrointestinal tract, termed Hade syndrome. 
A diagnosis may be suspected clinically, but is confirmed with echocardiography. We'll use the script structure to describe the murmur of aortic stenosis that is often found incidentally. It's best heard at the site of the right sternal edge at the second intercostal space, also known as the aortic area, and its character is classically described as a crescendo-decrescendo systolic murmur, meaning an increasing sound to a peak, then decreasing, which looks like a diamond shape on a phonogram. This murmur often radiates to the carotids on both sides. In general, intensity is the loudness of the murmur, graded with one being a faint murmur barely audible on auscultation, and six being audible with the stethoscope not in contact with the chest. In most cases, non-pathological murmurs will be less than grade three, which is easily heard without a palpable vibration, called a thrill. Aortic stenosis and intensity generally increases with severity, but critical cases can actually be more silent. In terms of pitch, aortic stenosis is associated with a high pressure gradient across the valve, meaning high velocity, which usually translates to a high pitch. In later stages, when the ventricle begins to fail, the pressure gradient will be lower. For timing, as we said, it is a systolic murmur, and so is heard between the first and second heart sounds. ECG will usually show left ventricular hypertrophy, but may also show conduction pathologies such as atrioventricular or bundle branch blocks. The diagnosis is confirmed through echocardiography, as it can identify a stenosed valve, assess the pressure gradient across the valve, as well as evaluate the size and the function of the left ventricle. Treatment is mostly through replacement of the aortic valve. There has not been evidence of a medical method to slow the progression of aortic stenosis, including statins. The two main interventions done, a transcatheter aortic valve implantation, known as TAVI, or surgical aortic valve replacement, SAVA. TAVI involves positioning a folded biological valve inside the site of the stenosed aortic valve via a catheter, for example via the femoral artery, and then deploying it once it's in position. This is generally the favoured option in those over 80 or with less than 10 years life expectancy, as there are less short-term risks like stroke, atrial fibrillation, or major bleeding. However, the durability beyond five years is not as well understood. Surgical replacement instead involves open surgery and replacement of the diseased aortic valve for a new mechanical or biological prosthesis. It generally has higher short-term complications, but longer durability which is why it is favoured in younger patients. A variant called the Ross procedure involves using the patient's pulmonary valve as a replacement for the aortic valve, then placing a prosthetic to replace the pulmonary valve. Mechanical valve replacement will need lifelong anticoagulation with warfarin, as direct oral anticoagulants as yet have not been found to be effective. The risk of interventions generally outweigh the benefits in asymptomatic patients, but is indicated when symptoms are present as the mean survival from symptom onset is two to three years. Asymptomatic cases may be candidates for intervention if radiological findings are severe enough. This is why patients undergo echo and monitoring so that the need for intervention is identified early. In those deemed unsuitable for surgery, Medications such as furosemide and ACE inhibitors are used cautiously in an attempt to manage the heart failure symptoms. Caution with antihypertensives is important due to a proposed risk of severe diastolic hypotension if afterload is reduced, which may reduce myocardial perfusion. The American Heart Association do recommend the use of antihypertensives, but specify careful titration and blood pressure monitoring. Overall, surgical management is the definitive treatment with no medical treatment showing prognostic benefit.